What do you think of it, Bill? I think this is fantastic. I couldn't ask for much more. In the middle of December, the Wisconsin birding community was abuzz due to an event that had never happened before, and Allen's hummingbird was recorded within state lines. This first ever state record came in the form of a bird that had been visiting a feeder in the city of New Glarus since Thanksgiving. Vagrant birds and first state records are always a big deal to birders, but what was it about this particular hummingbird that seemed to be so much more captivating than other species? For starters, the normal range of the Allen's Hummingbird is nowhere near Wisconsin. Second, Allen's Hummingbirds can only be differentiated from Rufus Hummingbirds by subtle tail feather characteristics. This means that the bird either has to be caught and identified or very specific pictures of the specimen need to be taken. Third, the story, which included a caring homeowner, an absolutely exhilarated Wisconsin birding community, and Christmas lights. For us, the story started on December 16th when birder and hummingbird bander Cynthia Bridge reported banding a Salasphorus hummingbird that had been visiting a bird feeder in New Glarus, Wisconsin. After getting permission from the homeowner to come see the bird, we made the trip out on the first day it was available to be viewed, hoping to see our lifer, Alan's hummingbird. Billy G, what's up? Look at this guy. What's going on? It's been years. After meeting up with Bill and making the hour-long drive, we arrived at the home. We made it. It didn't take long for the bird to make an appearance. He's in the tree. I see him. He's perched. He's directly above oh, yeah, yeah. the black oil sunflower feeder. The Allen's hummingbird is normally thought of as a bird of the west coast, migrating between Mexico and a few of the western and southwestern states in the U.S. Within this population are two subspecies, one of which winters in Mexico and the other that winters in Southern California. Allen's hummingbirds leave their wintering grounds extremely early, arriving at their breeding area as soon as January, when the winter rain produces flowers. Their coloration varies between shades of green, orange, brown, black, and white, depending on the gender and age of the bird. Individual Allen's hummingbirds at certain ages and in certain plumages can look very similar to other hummingbirds in the same genus, known as Salasphorus hummingbirds. These individuals are best identified by having the bird in hand and looking at the shape of the tail feathers and taking measurements. Even then, some are too ambiguous to tell apart and are best left as Rufus slash Allen's hummingbird. Nests are tiny, about 1.25 inches wide, and made out of downy materials from trees and flowers, spider webs, grasses, leaves, mosses, lichens, and more. Allen's hummingbirds have one to three broods per year. Males tend to choose territories in more open areas, while females pick nest sites between 2 to 50 feet off the ground that are more covered by forest. Allen's hummingbirds feed on flower nectar and will also come to hummingbird feeders. Additionally, they get protein from eating small insects. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. It was really that's easy. You got your Surprisingly bird easy. Bird species picture for yeah. Wisconsin? Yeah. yeah, that's pretty cool. That that was fantastic. First date yeah. record. Yeah. First date record. We got on the. Sure. Pretty that's much first awesome. date was available so to the what's public. This, <laughs> what do you think of it, Bill? I think this is fantastic. I couldn't ask for much more. I think he's gotta be like uncomfortable in this cold time. I don't know. I thought Allen's and Allen's and Rufus's are fairly cold hardy from oh, there he goes. Okay. Yep. It's on the back side. In the time we were there, the Allen's hummingbird would fly from the bushes and trees to the feeder, stay for a while, and then go fly off to another perch. The festive looking hummingbird feeder also became part of the story, as the heat generated by the lights helped to keep the liquid from freezing. After spending some time with the hummingbird and exchanging stories with other people that showed up to view the bird, we headed out, feeling fortunate to have been able to see Wisconsin's first state record Allen's hummingbird. That, that realistically could be the only good opportunity for a long, long time to see a 100% for sure Allen's hummingbird. Well, 
assuming that they accept it, which I don't see how it I did get a couple good snapshots when it was on the back of the feeder, which I'm sure you probably got. All right, sweet. But, I mean, ones that I was at least like, ooh, yeah, that's, I was hoping to get something at least like that. I wanted it for the moment of it being by the Christmas lights. That, and that's what I want, just the interestingness of the feeder. And... A few weeks later, we caught up with Pam, the homeowner who was nice enough to talk with us about what it was like to have this amazing bird visiting her feeder. I'm Pam Lunn here. I reside... Um, outside of New Glarus, Wisconsin, and I'm the one that had this Allen's Hummingbird at my house. When this showed up, um, when did you realize it was something special? Did you know right away? I did not know it was anything special. I just thought it was this hummingbird, you know, that forgot to leave. <laughs> and, I, and I feed anything and everything, so... A bird is a bird to me. I mean, I know my basics. So, I mean, I had no idea it was anything like an Allen's hummingbird ever. So until I reached out to my friend Tara and my niece that guided me to Cynthia, finally. And that is when she, they wanted to come out and, and see if they could get a picture and possibly band it, you know. And that is when I found out that it was like, like 99% sure that day and I just went like well so what I mean I'm right down there what's so big deal Pam this is a big deal if it's Alan's hummingbird so otherwise I just I was just a uh, humming lost hummingbird that I was going to be feeding <laughs> um so yeah the ID between Rufus and Alan's hummingbird is the very technical feature so it was great that Cynthia was able to band it and get the like confirmed ID for the state record otherwise it'd be really hard to tell but how did you get? How did you feel when you found out it was the first one ever in the state? I was like, "Oh wow, that's that's cool." But you know, I just feed all the birds, so it was like, "Oh," and she said, "Pam, you're gonna have bird birders," as she called them, from <laughs> everywhere. And I thought, "Oh yeah, right." That's just what I thought. Oh yeah, right. I tell you, on Thursday night when I got in from the barn, my my phone was just busy 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 <laughs> i was like and i said to my sister i was so excited and i was trying to write down and try to tell people times finally i just had to give up tell people to park across the road just come whenever you can you know so i was like my sister says oh you're probably gonna need a secretary <laughs> I was like, <laughs> so it was really exciting i was just like oh yeah right and i couldn't believe i had over 200 people here wow wow yeah, and in eight days, you know, so, yeah. yeah. And thanks so much for letting everybody come. It was great to, like, I know everyone was really uh, thankful that they were able to come and see it. What was it like to have that many people over? It was awesome because I got to, the, everybody signed my book for me and said where they were from. So I got to interact with everybody just sh short and, you know, whatever. I mean, it was it was just awesome. I mean, I could have just not went out and met nobody, but that's not me. I was as <laughs> excited as them, all these people that came here to, to view it. What would I do if I seen one flying around out there? I'd get my heated hummingbird feeder out that I got now, and I'd go at it again, you know? So. Well, you were definitely a very hospitable host to everybody, and it's kind of the reaction that people get when they have a rare bird is different because some people don't want anyone to visit, so when they find out that people will come and try and see it, they're like, no, I don't want that, and there's some people that just say, bring on everybody, and, you know, it's just a very varied reaction from people. Um, and what a, what a good way to end a year with the pandemic and all this stuff. I mean, I put so many smiles on people's faces. Oh, my God, I couldn't, you know. I made people smile and they made, they put smiles on my face. So, and I got to see that bird. I mean, birds I've used sitting right where I'm sitting now and turn my head every day. I could do dishes right there. He'd sit and like watch me, you know? So, you know, <laughs> it was just like, I think, I, I don't think he was ever afraid of me. He would like buzz me when I was outside doing the feeders. The last day you guys saw was December 25th, right? Yep, eight in the morning. Um, like every 45 minutes and then th that at noon I seen him last and then I never seen him after that yeah we're all hoping he uh, decided to go somewhere warmer well you know what that's 
what I hope and pray for. And I've even like looked around outside and I haven't seen nothing and I don't want to see anything. I really do think that he migrated. Those Thalassaurus hummingbirds are known to be pretty hardy. So if there is one that was going to survive the cold, it would be, a, you know, Rufus or Allens or one of those. Yeah, and somebody did, you know, a few people did comment and say, Pam, he was a one fat and healthy bird. I think he will get wherever he's going mighty fine. So that made <laughs> me feel good because he was healthy. You know, he looked like it anyway. Definitely something uh, birders will remember for a long time. That's good. That's good. You know, I, I'm happy that I was, I could make so many people happy. None of us will ever know for sure what happened to the Allen's hummingbird that for a brief time visited Wisconsin. One thing we do know is that in a year that was challenging for people across the world, this hummingbird provided birders in our state with a reason to be optimistic. This sense of optimism was not only due to a new bird tallied in Wisconsin, but also a feeling of positivity and hope heading into the new year, caused by the way people from far and wide came together to see this little bird. We certainly enjoyed seeing this rarity, and the story that went along with it. As always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. Yeah.